Intrusive thoughts. Autumn leaves, yellow, red, orange, fall from a giant oak tree, like glowing embers. Several yards ahead of me, a purple truck backs out of a driveway, drives up the street. Out of nowhere, a scary scene plays in my mind, my intrusive thoughts. That's what the school psychologist called them when I was 10 years old. I watch in horror as they unfold, even though I know they are not real. The purple truck backing out, its bumper slamming into my side, my body flying through the air like a superhero, only I am not because then I am falling and superheroes never fall. My body rolling as it meets the pavement, the driver getting out, screaming for help, my body aching, knuckles bleeding. Nice. Yoo-hoo! A hand waves in front of my face. Callie? I blink, focus my eyes. Oh, Jinsung, hi. I take a deep breath in and blow it out. It never happened. I tell myself, none of it. I am okay. I am safe. So what are you doing here? I ask. I thought you had a thing. Jin Song shrugs. He is out of breath. Yeah, it is over now. I ran to catch up with you. You ran to catch up with me? I can't hold back my smile. You're a really nice guy, Jin Song. Yeah, right. She called me a really nice guy, but she's got it all wrong. I am a big, fat, lying sack of potatoes. Mrs. Sumner, a retired school teacher, is on her porch across the street, watering her various potted plants. She waves when she sees me. Hi, Jinsong. I wave back. Hi, Mrs. Sumner. She looks at Callie and squints. Oh, I point. This is Callie. They wave to each other. I look at the weird dress shirt thing Callie is wearing. So what is the deal with your clothes? She keeps her eyes on the sidewalk, careful not to step on any cracks. They are clothes, silly. Most people wear them, you know. I chuckle. Yeah, but nobody wears clothes like that. Not anymore. I mean, they are nice and all, I lie, but some people, other people at school, for example, might see them and think they are interesting. I don't know why these come out as questions. A huge grin spreads across her lips. That's sort of the point. I stop. She has got to be kidding me. You want people to notice your clothes? She crosses her arms, but she is still smiling. Can you keep a secret? Of course I can. She turns to me with a dead serious expression. Sometimes I do funny things, embarrassing things. So I figure if I am wearing weird clothes, people will notice the clothes instead. She raises her eyebrows. Good idea. Huh? More like ridiculous idea. You could always just wear a bag over your head. Callie laughs. And the sound of it makes my stomach feel normal again. When we reach the doors to our apartments, I don't want to go inside. Callie is like a 2000 piece jigsaw puzzle that I want to put together. There are so many questions I want to ask, but my mother knocks on the window and waves for me to come inside. She probably needs help setting up for tonight. Tick tock, eat the clock. I start at one o'clock. I work my way around the dinner plate that is my boss. I eat the buttered peas one by one until the pile is gone. Next is bread, thick and dry, not easy to swallow. Cough, cough, cough. Unfortunately, water isn't on the plate until 10 o'clock. Take a drink, Mom says. I can't. Not yet. 
drink. I can't, cough, cough, not yet. Mom reaches across the counter, slides my glass towards my chest. She does not understand. No one understands. Tom. Mom asks me to pick up my things and tuck in my shirt because her new, as of this morning, boyfriend, Tom, is coming over and they're going out tonight. I leap from the couch. Boyfriend? Already? Mom blushes. He came into the shop yesterday. Why? Why can't she stay single for two seconds? It's like she does not know how to live unless she's in a relationship. I croak like a frog, punch my chest. So you are leaving me alone tonight? Oh, sweet pea. Mom sticks out her lip. I thought you'd be happy for me. Hey, isn't that show you like on tonight? The one with the twins that are connected? I plop back onto the couch. You like that show, Mom. That's your show. If I can keep mom home tonight, she can't go out with Tom, which means she cannot break up with Tom and we won't move again yet. Excuses. There is a storm coming. Beautiful night. Mom, I need help with homework. When I get back. Mom, I think I have a fever. Callie, I think you're fine. A tight feeling creeps onto my face and my tics pop out. I squeeze my eyes. I stretch my mouth. I contort my face into ugly. Mom frowns, pats my hand. And please, try not to make those faces when Tom is here. You remember what the doctor said. Mm Mm-hmm. Thinking while hanging lanterns. Callie better not tell anyone I walked home with her today. Hey, maybe I can be her friend after school, just not during school. I wish she would wear some normal clothes. Is she doing laundry tonight? I don't know what it is, but there's something exciting about her. I think. It was Friday night, I think, when mom got the call that would change our lives. She dropped the phone on the kitchen tiles, curled into herself, and cried. Dad had been gone on one of his trips to Chicago, I think, but he was on his way home from the airport when it happened. There was snow, lots of snow, falling in clumps, I think, and Dad was tired, really tired, so he closed his eyes just for a second, but he never opened them again. Boyfriend number 229. It turns out Tom is tall, tall, tall. A telephone pole. He is nice, I guess. At least he opens the door for her. I wonder how long he will last. Ford. During a rerun of the treacherous twins, there is a knock at the door. I keep watching. I cannot answer the door when mom is gone. When the knock comes again, so do my intrusive thoughts. Me answering the door. A police officer removing his hat. Telling me that mom's been hurt. Telling me Tom is not nice like we thought. Riding with the policeman to the hospital seeing mom in a light blue gown. I snap out of my thoughts when I hear, um, Callie? A familiar voice is speaking through the door. It shakes me from my days. Your mother told my mother you're here. It's Jinsong. She said you are watching some show about babies who were born all connected which sounds seriously boring. So, do you want to come over to my house? It's the Chinese Moon Festival. He pauses, probably waiting for my answer, but I do not give him one. I am too busy rushing to the door, smoothing my wrinkled t-shirt, 
and anything involving the moon has got to be amazing. Someone. I open the door and see Jinsong, cinnamon eyes, cheerful grin, bare feet, a friend. Number 15. Jin Song's apartment, number 15, is identical to mine, yet it is completely different. His place smells like home-cooked food, while mine smells like freezer meals. My place sounds like empty silence. His is filled with love. My place is decorated with brown moving boxes, and his has colorful lanterns. They're resting on tables, hanging from ceilings, and the lanterns are all lit up, like this feeling I have inside. Beautiful. After introducing Callie to my mother, father, Chong Lin, and grandfather, he was on Skype, we grab a plate of moon cakes and head up to the balcony. Callie is wearing normal clothes again, a t-shirt and jeans. We sit side by side and stuff our mouths until our bellies feel like bursting. Nothing is better than a moon cake with a crispy crust that melts away in your mouth. We drove all the way to Vegas and back yesterday so we could buy them from our favorite bakery in Chinatown. We do not buy them every year, but when we do, oh man, we buy a lot. Callie punches her chest and turns her head to the side real quick. What was that? Some of the funny things she was talking about earlier? She looks really embarrassed, but up here on my balcony, outlined by the full moon, I think she looks beautiful. You are beautiful, I whisper. <gasps> Did I say that out loud? She turns toward me, her eyes bulging. What? I look away, up at the sky. I mean, the moon. The moon is beautiful, isn't it? I am such a nerd. Now she is going to think I like her. And then I realize, mm, I think I do. Ball talk. Jin Song is wearing another baseball jersey, this time with a hat. So, do you play ball? I asked. He nods. I'm the pitcher. I'm trying out for Little League in the spring. I sigh. You know, my dad used to play baseball. His eyes light up. Really? What position? I don't know. That's just what my mom said. He started when he was a kid. He got a scholarship and everything. That's awesome. How come he doesn't play anymore? Um, new subject. You want to know something about the moon? Jin Song lifts an eyebrow. Yeah? Okay, are you ready for this? It isn't round. It is egg-shaped. My head jerks to the side. It is called an oblate spheroid, to be exact. When we look at the moon, we are looking at one of its ends. Jin Song's makes a sound. Psh! I did not know that. I feel my face tightening. Oh no, hold in the tick, Callie. I tense my body. Most people don't know. Surprise. I breathe slowly, trying to stop my facial tics from coming. Jin Song is looking right at me. Maybe I should leave before he... I squeeze my eyes. I stretch my mouth. I contort my face into ugly. These awful tics just love to surprise me. But the most surprising thing of all is that J Jin Song doesn't turn away. He keeps on looking at me, right at me, smiling with his cinnamon colored eyes. Fun. I want to pluck the moon from the sky, swing it around in circles. Is this what it feels like to have a best friend? Maybe we will hang out every day. Maybe we will have picnics and tell jokes 
and share secrets and pass notes and have fun. A riddle. For the next few minutes, we don't talk. We just listen to my family laughing inside my apartment. Callie is pretty much the smartest girl I know. I want to say something smart too, but I don't know what. Then I remember the one time my parents took me to the big mid-autumn festival celebration in Las Vegas. You want to know something about Chinese lanterns, I ask, grabbing one of the paper lanterns set up on the balcony. We write riddles on them. Sounds fun. I'm going to write you a riddle, I say. You get three clues. If you guess the answer, I will give you a prize. Callie scowls. What if I don't guess it? Then you don't get the prize. Duh. I grab a marker from inside and write the first clue on the lantern. Callie says something, but I'm so nervous I can't tell what it is that she says. When I am finished, she takes the lantern from me and reads the clue. I have short hair. She pauses to think. Is it a bunny? Not even close. Here's the second clue, Callie. Now think about it. I write it on the lantern. Callie reads. I am cute. She scrunches her nose. Jinsong, it has to be a bunny. For the love of baseball, seriously, sweat from my hands seeps through the fragile lantern as I write the last clue. I just know she's going to get the riddle. It is so obvious. And then I will give her the prize. She takes the lantern from me. Is she as nervous as I am? With shaking fingers, she reads, Jin Song likes me. Third clue. I hold the lantern with trembling hands. Can Jin Song tell how nervous I am? I'm pretty sure he's talking about a girl, but I don't want him to know that I know. Because what if I'm wrong? And what if the girl is not me that he likes? So I say the first thing I see, um, is it mooncakes?